What's up my fellow artists and art enthusiasts alike. I'm super excited to do this video today because I am preparing to start selling my vast collection of paintings that I've built up over the past few years. This is three years in the making. I've been painting since the end of 2018. So close to three years in the making and I'm super ready to hit the market and start trying to sell my paintings. On that note, let's actually take a quick walk around the apartment so you can see the actual collection and what we've done here. Let me just get this off of the stand real quick. Whoa, okay, let's turn this viewer around. So first off, you're already familiar with this background. All these notes here marked with green means that these ones I we've deemed worthy of being sellable. The ones with pink are the ones that we need to seal, which is actually what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and take this guy off the wall. I only put him up there because I did that in a video and uh, I wanted it in the background because, you know, I wanted those little Easter eggs in the background. But yeah, so let's this one in particular this painting in particular, I can't sell. There's actually a cool story behind that. If you if you watched my video on my origin story as an artist, uh, something that happened to me back in 2020, I got hit by a car while riding my bike to work. And this was the image that flitted through my mind for months after getting hit. It was the image uh, that I saw of me shutting my eyes between getting hit and hitting the pavement. <laughs> so... Funny, funny part of that story is as I was riding my bike, literally right before I got hit, I was thinking, I'm going to get hit by a car riding this bike to work one day. And as soon as the thought passed through my mind, the car hit me. I felt the impact on my back. I'm flying through the air and I'm thinking, holy crap, I just got hit. That actually has a title on it. Not all my paintings have titles, but this one has the title of, holy crap, I got hit. <laughs> It's actually a little more explicit than that, but I'm not going to use curse words in, the, in this video just so I can keep it clean and family friendly. Anyway, cool story. Thought about getting hit, got hit, and that's the image I saw in my, in my head I, as my eyes were shut and I'm flying through the air and I'm thinking, I can't believe that actually just happened. I got hit after thinking about getting hit. It was just one of the weirdest experiences of my life and it changed the course of my life. But that's totally beside the point of this video, so let's go ahead and continue with the little art museum tour. So those two space paintings, I'm not going to sell. I want to keep those. This one's going on the market. These need to be sealed. So this is the point of the video today. We are going to be sealing a bunch of paintings. And the reason why I have so many paintings that aren't sealed is because I'm kind of actually scared to mess it up. I don't know about you, but if you've ever tried sealing your paintings, they're pretty easy to mess up. So let's actually show you some, but hold on. I got all these paintings over here that still need to be sealed. That's not all. You got two up there, those are ready to go. All these are ready to go. They're not all gonna be sold. Some of them aren't deemed worthy enough. All these. This painting right here is a good example of how you can mess up doing a seal. So let's go look at it in the light, in the light of the studio. So if you see me, you see how this painting, you can see the lines on it. The painting's great, uh, but you know, it's the worst when you have a great painting and you go to seal it with a layer of varnish and you mess it up like this, like that kills my soul. It takes a piece of my soul. So that is what we're doing in this video. Quick side note, need, need your help solving a debate me and my art manager are having. Right here, here we have four different colors of sticky notes. Now this color right here, what color is that? What color do you think that is? Is that a shade of green or is that a shade of blue? Put your answers in the comments below. Okay, so for how to seal an acrylic painting, it can be a little bit tricky and because I don't always do it successfully 
and I have a lot of paintings to steal, especially my bigger ones, which are going to be a lot more pricey uh, for my selling debut. We're going to start with the little ones just in case I make any mistakes. I'd rather be on the little ones while I work my confidence up and uh, get my technique down. So these three paintings right here, we deemed these worthy of a set for a giveaway. Maybe this will be what I give away to the 500th subscriber. I'll probably do another giveaway at 1,000 subscribers as well. So definitely hit that subscribe button if we're already past 500 subscribers. And yeah, so let me go ahead and uh, get this set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use these, these thumbtacks here, put them in the back of the painting so it's lifted off of the table and I don't accidentally seal my paintings to the surface of the table. These brushes, I just have to say, I use these Dick Blick brushes a lot in my videos and uh, I sometimes link to them in the comments. It's an affiliate link, so I earn a little bit of a commission. But to be honest with you, I can't really recommend these particular Dick Blick brushes. They are cheap and uh, I just have not been very happy with them. Look at this one right here. Screw fell out. Screw fell out or nail, screw whatever. It's got literally, it's literally got one freaking nail holding it together. And that one's started to come out and I've had to push it back in. So I really can't recommend these brushes, but that said, in way of getting a good seal, the thinness of the uh, of the bristle is really, really good for it. So I've learned there's basically two different things uh, you want when you're doing your seal. You want uh, a brush with nice thin bristles. You don't want them to be too thick. And then you also want to make sure that you layer I'm gonna just talk. I might as well talk at the camera and let you see my face. You also want to make sure that uh, the layer is quite thin. So you, it's it needs to be thin, and you need to put it on quickly. Because I've noticed that if I don't put it on quickly and I go over it too many times, that's how you get brush strokes. That's how it ends up looking cloudy. That's how you get a bad finish, a bad seal with the varnish. So. With all that said, and me rambling on about random stuff for a few minutes here that are as unrelated to the topic of the video, let's go ahead and get into it. So since I know I have a history of messing up the varnishing process, I decided instead of using any of my good paintings, I would just use this painting instead. This is a pretty much a throwaway painting. I don't really care what's going to happen to it. As you can see, there's some messed up parts here and there. Um, so yeah, we're going to use this first. And uh, in relation to the thinness aspect that I was speaking about before, after conducting a little research and, and doing some experimenting, I've actually learned that uh, adding a bit of water to your varnish really, really goes a long way towards helping to prevent the cloudy results and the brush strokes that we don't want to get. Another thing as well is creating an isolation coat. So here you see me uh, using, a, using a soft gel gloss. This is golden soft gel gloss which I'm going to water down in a two to one ratio. So about two parts water to one part gloss or soft gel gloss. And we'll use this to create our isolation coat. This can help create a barrier between the painting and the varnish. Uh, that way, in case you have it, maybe at some point down the road, years from now, when the varnish starts to yellow or something like that, you can actually remove the varnish and re-varnish the painting. It's also useful in acrylic pores in particular, where you've used silicone to get cells in your pores. You definitely want to clean the silicone off the surface of your painting first, but using an isolation barrier helps create a layer of protection. So here we are with the isolation coat mixture that we're going to be using for this first layer.
isolation coat is now dry. So now we are going to continue our little experiment here with our satin, Liquitex satin medium finish. Got to take the little seal off. And oh, goodness gracious. That is not what I was expecting. Okay. I think I'm probably going to add water to this as well. So for the satin finish, I really was not expecting it to be this thick. This is with about 25% water. This is with about 25% water mixed into that thick pasty mixture that comes out of the bottle. I guess I've never really used satin finish before, so we're gonna see how this turns out. I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Here we are after the second coat of satin varnish has been applied. And as we can see, much better results. I don't see any brush strokes at all. It's got a very, very slight gloss to it, probably because the satin varnish is a little bit watered down. Um, Cause it's my understanding that satin is supposed to be a bit more shiny than matte varnish is. So this came out pretty good. So now let's go ahead and move on to a painting that I actually want to come out nicely. So we're gonna do this painting next. We're, uh, we're gonna use this, a similar process. We'll do the isolation coat that we used before and just to recap, the isolation coat was the soft, the golden soft gel gloss watered down in about a two to one ratio. And then I also, I want this to come out a little bit more glossy than the satin medium. And we'll, we'll, just, we'll just add a little bit of the, the high gloss varnish to what we have here mixed up with our satin varnish and see what happens when we mix the two together? We'll see what sort of results we get that way. So, I mean, as you can see, there's a lot of different ways you can mix and match stuff. Right now, our main goal, more than anything, is to ensure quality results without brush strokes in it. We don't wanna see any brush strokes, and with a little bit of gloss or high gloss, we wanna, we're hoping to help make these colors pop a little bit, as well as protect the painting from uh, sunlight damage, from dust, from water damage, all of that stuff is the reason why we want to finish our paintings with a varnish. with our isolation coat dry. So as you can see, it's got a little bit of a nice gloss going on to it already, even with a light isolation coat. So now let's go ahead and add our, we have our it's a satin mixture with a high gloss mixture with a little bit of water as well. So satin, high gloss, and water. Okay, here we go.
think the water really helps prevent it from drying too quickly, which is part of why when there's not water in it, you end up getting cloudy brush strokes because it starts to dry as you're still applying it, which leads to the cloudy br brush strokes. All right, so that's gonna be our first layer. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna leave that to dry and we'll, we'll do a second coat here once that dries. So as you can see here, it's got a bit of a, bit of a gloss to it. And I just was trying to show you this one area right in here. There's my dog looking out the window. <laughs> you can hear his, pit, his steps, and that's his shadow right there on the table. Anyway, so if you look straight on, it looks pretty good. We've preserved our colors, we preserved the painting. It's just when you look at it at an angle, you might be able to see where I slightly messed up by leaving a puddle right here far thicker than I should have. Thankfully, the high gloss varnish is actually pretty thin and then adding just a slight bit of water helps thin it out and prevent getting brush strokes and cl uh, cloudiness in the results. Let's actually do a few more paintings and then we'll go ahead and throw it all together and point out all the flaws and problems that I had and that you probably have when trying to seal your paintings and how to avoid them. For this particular painting, I wanna practice doing a matte varnish because it seems like the matte varnish is the one that I have the most problems with and it's the one that I most frequently use on my paintings. This particular painting is one I did in probably in 2019 and I had always intended to finish it out more but then I never did. So it's a rather slightly incomplete painting. This particular bird had more of an iridescent look to it and I always wanted to add a little bit of an iridescent paint finish to it. But since it didn't make the final cut that me and my art manager did the other day on whether or not to sell it or to give it away, uh, we're going to go ahead and use it in this experiment. This is what I'm going to use for my isolation coat, but technically it's probably thick enough to be what I use for the seal as well. Ultimately, it's a little bit leftover mixture of my previous isolation coats. I took the golden extra heavy gel mat and I watered it down to make this. So we will see how it turns out. It's entirely possible I don't even need to do that. It's, it's probably maybe better to use the actual Blick matte varnish. But again, this is actually quite thick, so this may actually work out better when I start to water it down slightly. I'm finding that water really helps to prevent getting these thick brush strokes. And it's probably better to do that and add multiple layers than it is to mess up and get cloudy brush strokes in your finished painting. I'm gonna turn this this way since I'm kind of working sideways here off of the camera. Good news is our first layer that we put on this canvas came out outstanding. I can't even tell that there's anything been done to it. So that's a good first step. And that is ideal, an ideal result with a matte varnish. That said, that was just the first layer or the isolation coat as they call it. Um, but I'm just gonna keep using the same mixture and just adding several layers because I have a lot of it and I don't want it to go to waste. The 
second layer has dried. I think we found the key here, folks. The key is to slightly water down your varnish, especially if it's a bit thicker. So when working with something like the Dick Wick matte varnish, you can see that's, that's a pretty thick varnish, which is probably why I tend to have some trouble with getting brush strokes and cloudiness in my results. Maybe one more layer on this and it should be good to go. Even though I'm not really gonna sell it or do anything with it. I just go over it lightly in strips to make sure the whole thing is covered. Try to make sure that I'm getting all of the thick lines and brush strokes. Look at it from an angle so that way the light hits it and I can see which parts of the canvas are covered just to ensure I'm getting a nice even coverage across the whole canvas. And bada bing bada boom. One more layer down. So sometimes it's a good idea to uh, cover your painting with something. Uh, if you have like cats or dogs or something like that, where there's a lot of hair floating around, it might be a good idea to find some container to cover over it while it dries. So that way there isn't any hair or anything like that that gets dried and sealed onto the painting. As we explored throughout this video, there are a number of different ways to mess up getting a good seal on an acrylic painting, as well as some techniques that you can use towards getting quality results without brush strokes or cloudiness. Remember that the key component towards getting those quality results is adding a bit of water into your mixture and using what's called an isolation coat. Throughout my research, pretty much everyone who does an isolation coat for one reason or another uses a gel medium to do so. They take the gel and they water it down two parts water to one part gel. Uh, this may require a little bit more water if you're using a heavier or thicker gel. Before you take off, check out some abstract painting techniques right here. Or check out this other video that YouTube says you'll definitely love. This one, right here.